Emily from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Monday, September 9th. So today we will see the moon in Scorpio energy go void, of course, at 1.12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Sagittarius energy at 1.27 p.m., so a very short window of time that the moon will be void, which of course works in our favor, because when the moon is void, things are very shaky. Things are very unstable, very uncertain, emotionally speaking. And so the transition from Scorpio energy into Sag energy is always a welcome one. The Sag energy kind of acts as the light at the end of what is a very dark tunnel of us doing shadow work with the moon in Scorpio energy. So just think, we face some truths, we face darker parts of ourselves, we're realizing where there's some issues, where there's some blockages. And because we are kind of shedding our skin under the Scorpio influence, because it is about change and transformation, what we're left over with, what gets merged together so that we're operating from a place of wholeness, now we stand in a new light, a new truth. We have a new mission, a new perspective, a new purpose, if you will. And that Sag energy encourages us to be optimistic, to be confident within ourselves, to dream the biggest dream possible, kind of renews our sense of curiosity, of adventure. We definitely want to take our new understanding, our new perspective, and really kind of run with it. So the mood, the attitude, the vibes are always super positive in that Sag energy. But of course, we're still in Virgo season. We're still very much trying to focus on the issues in order to fix them, heal them, resolve them. We do have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler over Virgo season, re-entering into Virgo energy here today. Take a listen to the forecast. Get your Virgo season e-guide out. This is going to be a little bit of a reflection, a review from pretty much July 25th to August 14th when we were first in this Virgo energy because, of course, Mercury went retrograde up four degrees. And on the 11th, that is when we are going to be free, clear of the post-retrograde shadow period. So... With all of that being said, there are 12 different aspects popping off here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. Mercury, right out of the gate, is going to make a very harsh interaction with Pluto, mostly because, of course, Mercury is at the final critical crisis degree of this Leo energy. Pluto, the great transformer himself, now retrograde at the final degrees of Capricorn energy. So, of course, we have a huge intensity in our mental plane, in our narrative, in our focus, in our attention. The Plutonian energy, of course, is going to really put that headspace in the vice grips in order for us to take a last glance, if you will, at the old world, at what we're no longer connected to, what we're no longer attached to. Again, a reminder, Mercury's time in this Leo energy has been reviewing, reevaluating, restructuring matters of the heart. And so Pluto, who of course wants to highlight the darkness, highlight the fears, highlight the doubts, the insecurities, we do so so that we can flip the script. We can actually shift it, change it into something a little bit more encouraging, something a little bit more empowering and supportive. So this is going to kind of peel back the layers, if you will. There may be a situation where hidden information, hidden details rise to the surface, either epiphanies, aha moments, or just recognizing where it is that we don't feel the same that we did, taking a good look back at all we've been through, where it is that we've grown, where it is that we've healed. We do have to kind of go through a major change, a major transformation of the headspace, of the heart space, with Pluto applying the pressure. Again, he is retrograde, looking back in Capricorn energy at the structures, at the foundations of the roles, the responsibilities, the karmic chapters that we've been learning the hard way since essentially 2008. But realistically, a couple of flashbacks to, let's say, the beginning of the year, fall 2023. That's really when the beginning of the end of what we're currently trying to clean up and wrap up initially began. Now, 2.50 a.m., and again, Eastern Standard Time, Mercury is going to move into this Virgo energy. This is definitely going to, again, let's say simplify 
the overwhelming confusion that we've been having in our headspace. Now, again, we're still in reflection mode until the 11th when he moves into that fifth degree. But nonetheless, we are kind of focused in on the details. We're focused in on our inner dialogue, our inner narratives. We are thinking a lot more logically, a lot more practically than we have been in that Leo energy, because of course we had to consider our emotions. But now that we kind of realize where there's been a major change, not only in our headspace, but in our heart space and therefore our circumstances, now we can kind of start to problem solve. We're going to start seeing solutions where there were none just a couple of weeks ago, and we're going to be feeling a little bit clearer. Oh, albeit, I'm saying this hesitantly, we are still in the post retrograde shadow period until the 11th. So the clarity, yeah, it may be little bits here and there, but overall, we're not moving into new thoughts, new ideas, new solutions until the 11th. The moon, while still in the Scorpio energy, again, doing a deep dive in our emotions, in our spiritual realm to see where it is that maybe there's some old parts of self blocking us from making some progress. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars is the co-ruler of Scorpio energy. So this should be a little bit of an intense aspect. Mars, of course, in cancer energy, definitely looking at boundaries, what we need to feel safe and secure need to feel in order to feel stabilized in our emotional realm. Now, this particular interaction definitely going to have us bossing up. We're feeling brave. We're tapping into a warrior type of spirit to fight for what it is that we need. Again, we are fulfilling our own wants, needs, and desires at this point. We are understanding where boundaries need to be implemented in our physical realm in order for us to basically fight, defend, and protect what it is that we've already built. The little peace bubble, if you will, that we have found within ourselves. We don't want anybody to really bust it. Now, this is also going to amplify new passions, new desires, what we're super, super triggered and activated to kind of tackle, what we want to, again, kind of stand our guard on about. We are just taking a little bit of an emotional inventory, if you will, on where our time, our energy, our attention is needed. The moon is going to come into an opposition with Uranus, though. Uranus being the Great Awakener, retrograde in the Taurus energy. Scorpio and Taurus energy sit across from each other in the Zodiac wheel, where Scorpio energy kind of, let's say, changes and transforms us in our emotional realm and our spiritual realm due to kind of peeling back the layers of the old version of self. Let's just say that Scorpio energy is where death and destruction takes place in order for a renewal and a rebirth to actually form. Now, the Taurus energy is what we want to build, what we want to create in the space of the things that we're currently eliminating and removing out of our lives. Now, Uranus, the Great Awakener, is trying to bring us a new sense of clarity, but an opposition is where we have to kind of balance things out. And the fixed energy of both Scorpio and Taurus wants us to kind of hold on to the old, really stabilize and what is tried, tested, and true. However, we're starting to realize right now because of Uranus's retrograde and Taurus energy, where it is that we're desperately holding on to things that we've outgrown, things that are no longer serving a purpose and essentially holding us back. And so we need to strike a balance, emotionally speaking, to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves, to recognize where it is that we're beating a dead horse so that we can essentially leave that horse to his own peace, walk away, appreciate the horse for the time in which the horse has spent with us and the lessons in which that horse has taught us, and it's time to move on. So there is going to be a little bit of friction because we are going through a balancing stage of where it is that our time, energy, and attention is needed, both to eliminating, releasing, ending, and building, creating, bringing new things to life. The moon is then going to semi-square Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in her rulership in Libra energy. So this is going to highlight a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict, mostly because the Libra energy wants to stay in the shallow end of our thoughts, of our emotions. And of course, there is no shallow end time when Scorpio energy is involved. We're going right to the deep end, to the depths of the darkness that we are holding within ourselves so that we can figure out what we truly desire. And equally, when we figure out what it is that we truly desire, we tend to realize the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that we face and in trying to actually go after 
particular wants, needs, and desires. And because Venus is involved, this is about her happiness, her joy in relationships, in her physical realm, in her long-term plans and goals. And so there's definitely a shift changing, but Venus is wanting to stay in the light, fluffy, kind of shallow end of the emotions. And of course, we're not doing any of that with the moon in Scorpio. Things are going to get intensified. We're going to realize where it is that we're just people pleasing, where it is that we're just being kind of superficial and shallow just to kind of, you know, make things seem a little bit happier than they actually appear when realistically, there's a lot going on in our inner realm. We're figuring out what it is that we have to do differently to move on, to move forward and not make the same, same kind of mistakes again. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. This is going to be a boss up energy. We're feeling good about this new version of self. We're feeling good about identifying the new wants, needs, and desires. We're feeling good about our ability to grow and heal through the darkest parts of our lives. And this is really giving us confidence to see where it is that we would like to go from here. The moon is going to try beautiful interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his place of power in this Pisces energy. This is water on water action. This is going to cleanse us, purify us, really show us what it is that needs to be renewed, what it is that needs to be refreshed, resurrected, so to speak. This is also a great reminder on where it is that intuitively speaking, because there's a lot of intuition coming in with this particular aspect, we're being called to move in a different way towards a different goal, a different vision, a different dream. There is a lot of downloads going to be taking place and popping off within us that is going to set the tone on what we need to do and pursue from here. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with the sun in Virgo energy. We love Scorpio and Virgo energy working together because we get shit done. We figure things out. We come up with solutions. We come up with plans. We come up with strategies. And of course, anytime that the sun and the moon are working together in any kind of way, there's going to be a new level of awareness of what we want, what we need, what we desire, what it is that we're being challenged with, where it is that we're coming up with a plan and a strategy to overcome those challenges and where it is essentially that we want to end up. This is definitely going to boost our confidence, boost our optimism, empower us to make the changes that we know that we need to make. The moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Pluto who rules over the Scorpio energy. And again, Pluto is retrograde in this Capricorn energy. This is the last aspect that the moon will be making before going void, of course, and the interaction with its own ruler. You best believe that we are bossing up. We are feeling empowered. We are feeling like we are emotionally refreshed and renewed, like we're ready to kind of move into a new path to really pursue new wants, needs, and desires, and really set the tone for the goals, the ambitions that we are now having, really propelling us to make the changes, the transformations that we know we need to make. 1 12 p.m eastern standard time the moon goes void of course and we lock into that sag energy at 1 27 p.m eastern standard time 2 50 p.m we have the moon in sagittarius energy jumping into the boxing ring squaring off with mercury so mercury of course is now in his rulership in this virgo energy and a square highlights the tension and conflict because we're going through a growing pain here's the deal the Sag energy is so focused on where it is that we want to end up so optimistic, so confident that as long as we have a hope, a wish, a dream that it's going to come true. Mercury on the Virgo side of things is logical and practical. And we know that we have to focus on the smaller details that make up the greater, grander vision. We know that we have to put some physical elbow grease into the plan, the path, the strategy that we now have to come up with in order to actually bridge the gap from where it is that we're at to where it is that we desire to be. The moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're not on the same page right now. Again, the Sag energy is the big picture vision the Virgo energy is the small pieces needed to actually get us there. Mercury then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with the North Node and Aries energy. So we're starting to think about the future. We're starting to think about where it is that we have the opportunity to go and to grow, to heal, to repair, to make a move. We are starting to understand the blockages that we've been stuck in, the confusion that we've created within our own mental plane. And we're starting to see our opportunities now, our options to make a move. The moon in Sag energy going to make a harsh interaction with Mars. 
Mars being the god of war in this Cancer energy, again, kind of attached to the past, kind of wanting to stick to the same old, same old, really passive aggressive, fighting, defending, protecting what it is that we know to be true, what we really value, what we've already built, what we've already created. And so again, the tension, the conflict, the gap that is being illuminated here is that emotionally speaking, we are hopeful, we're wishful, we're thinking of ourselves in a future context. Mars, who rules over our physical action, has no want, need, or desire to pursue the path towards our future. We want to make sure that we're able, capable enough of standing our own ground here in this present moment, fighting, defending, protecting, again, our emotional peace, our emotional sanity that we just arrived at.